hello everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're back if you are new welcome to my channel i'm shana and i have an update for you guys on the alexis sharky case i've been trying to like establish the schedule where i upload on sundays but i am having absolutely no self-control when it comes to looking into this case and i took a week off work so i'm literally like true crime like all day and you think it messed with my head but this stuff is super interesting to me so i'm back so since my last video about alexis sharkey which was two videos ago i did come across some additional information i kind of just been scouring the internet you know just slithering around seeing what i could find and i did find some interesting stuff after doing some research i got a lot of feedback on my alexis sharkey video of people wanting more information people looking for updates so I am here to please. I 1000% look like a women and gender studies professor right now. Like, come on, it's the elephants for me. <laughs> so if you didn't see my Alexis Sharkey video, I would recommend going back to watch that before watching this because you're gonna kind of be confused if you aren't fully aware of the story before this. But a brief synopsis, there was a woman in her 20s who was found dead on Black Friday of 2020. And it's an ongoing investigation. Basically people are, kind of speculating about what could have happened in this case so i am just here with a little bit more tea or lemonade if you will so thank you for joining me let's jump right in so let's start with this tom person right so alexis's husband thomas sharkey is this like unknown figure why can't i find any information on this human what does he do nobody knows what he does for work only thing that people really know is that he travels a lot for work but like what does he do he hasn't really spoken out about anything since the case started which maybe that's like a self-preservation tactic he doesn't want to say anything that could implicate himself but like why don't we know anything about this man that number one is concerning to me and also there is information apparent and this is all alleged what i found on the internet okay apparently there are court documents going back to his children that he had before alexis of him losing custody for being manipulative and doing other things so i don't know what's going on with this character but something is just not sitting right in my spirit all right now first really odd thing that i've pieced together so when allegedly tom explained what happened the night of black friday when alexis left the house he said that alexis left her cell phone in the house first right so he said initially she ran out the house because she was mad and she was drunk or under the influence of some substance she left her phone in the house and left hopped the fence but then another statement he said he was driving around and sat in a parking lot of a gas station for two hours trying to locate her phone so which is it? So why would you make a statement saying that her phone was in the house and then make a statement saying that you were trying to ping or do the find my iPhone kind of thing? And also it strikes me as really weird because Alexis would not leave anywhere without her phone. I don't leave anywhere without my phone. My 50 something year old parents don't leave anywhere without their phone. People have their phones on them. So I don't care how old she was. If she wandered off into the night, she would have taken her phone. So there's just a lot of inconsistencies there. Let's start there. Other conflicting statements. Tom has said that after Alexis left that night, right, she ran off into the night. Apparently, she hopped the fence that was around their apartment. Hopped the fence. She hopped the fence and she jumped into some sort of car. First, he said it was a sporty kind of Fast and Furious kind of car. Picture a Camaro or a Mustang or something like that. And then he said it was a black SUV. So which is it? Which is it? Also, there have been absolutely no statements from anyone that knows Alexis saying that they saw her that night or anything like that. So it's like Tom's story is just like, it's too many different stories and it's obvious that something isn't right. Like you can't tell this many different stories. Obviously he's lying or not being truthful about something. Now I would imagine when you're in a situation where there's a lot of pressure on you, you know that you're probably under a microscope, you might mess up, right? I can understand messing up. But there's just a, mm, 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 I don't, mm, mm. Tom's sister has been on Facebook defending him, basically saying he's been cleared. Investigators looked at his cell phone and gave it back to him and that he's clear. But like, why, 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 is, why, <coughs> why is Tom not saying this? Why is his sister on Facebook defending him? Mm, all right, moving on. This is the biggest Thing that has me scratching my head right now so alexis's mother did an interview with a local news station in houston and basically 
what she said, it, it just blew my mind. So initially when it was found that Alexis had been deceased or whatever, Alexis's mother talked to Tom and he agreed that her funeral and all of her arrangements should take place with her immediate family back in Pennsylvania where her family lives. So as soon as she passed away, his mother and him had this agreement, look, okay, after the autopsy or whatever, she's going to be brought back to Pennsylvania and we'll do her service and her burial and whatnot here. Now, after this, and this is all straight from the horse's mouth, this is from Alexis's mother directly. She says that she lost contact with Tom after this discussion that they had. And the issue with this is that as as her husband, he's obviously the next of kin legally. So he was the person who had the ability to say, okay, let's get her taken to Pennsylvania or let's bury her here. All of her arrangements had to go through Tom because he's her husband legally. And that like is so infuriating, I'm sure, for Alexis's mother to have to like get permission to give her daughter a proper burial. But Tom basically fell off the grid. So for two weeks, Alexis's mother could not get in contact with Tom. She basically felt like she was fighting. And she says that in the interview, and I'll play it for you guys, she felt like she was fighting for her own daughter to give her own daughter a proper burial. How sad and disheartening is that? But she talked to the forensics lab and was able to get the next of kin shifted over to her since Tom was non-responsive. So Tom was not only non-responsive to Alexis's mother, but also to the forensics lab who's like, okay, what do you want us to do with your wife? She's just here. Like it's been two weeks. Most families are trying to make arrangements. They're trying to get their loved one, you know, laid to rest, right? Most people want this, this cloud to be disintegrated they want the family to be able to grieve to mourn and then lay their family member to rest but he just stopped all action he didn't respond to anybody that's weird to me it's weird it doesn't make any sense and if i were alexis's mother i'm sorry my nose i would be side eyeing him right now i would be side eyeing him right now she has gone on the record saying you know because people have asked her outright, do you think Tom did it? And she basically says, look, I'm just going to let the police do their job and justice will be served. I'm not saying that I think anyone, like she's not trying to come out and say that she thinks anyone did it. But come on now, if my daughter died suspiciously and her husband is telling different stories and then he's trying to manipulate and not let me get my daughter to give her a proper burial, now we really have a problem. And now I'm really looking at you as a suspect. So that was the biggest thing. I'm going to go ahead and play the clip for you guys now. New developments in the case. I didn't think I was going to get her. And I actually given up hope when all of a sudden the forensics lab called me. Alexis Sharkey's mom says she didn't think she'd get to see her daughter again as one week turned into two with no ability to plan a funeral. Lexi's husband, Thomas Sharkey, was listed as next of kin. As her husband, he would have primary custody um, of, of what, to turn, what happened with her. Um, and he had said all along that he was willing to let her come home. Stacey Robinault wanted to bring her daughter home for a funeral in her hometown in Pennsylvania. Lexi had only lived in Houston for about a year, but she couldn't do anything without next of kin approval. And she says Tom stopped cooperating. It just was a very strange, I'd almost call it fight to get her. Tom Sharkey hasn't responded to Fox 26's interview requests. After two weeks with no action from Tom, the medical examiner changed next of kin custody to Lexi's mom, and on Friday, they finally had a viewing. We had just the very closest of family. It was very private. We thought it would give us more closure than it actually did. Allie Kale was among some of Lexi's closest friends who flew from Houston to say their final goodbyes at Lexi's funeral. You know, we did get to see her body. Uh, it just, it, it didn't look like her. None of us had seen her since Christmas last year. So it was just really important for us to see her. Now, Alexis Sharkey's autopsy has not been released because investigators, investigators are awaiting the toxicology report, but police say they are still investigating and have not named anyone as a person of interest. 
obviously really disheartening for Alexis's mother super like just disappointing but I'm glad that Alexis was able to come home I'm glad that her family members were able to give her the burial that she deserved that's what's most important but it definitely kind of just leaves a bad taste in your mouth you know what I mean now I talked about Tanya in the last video who was Alexis's supposed best friend and I mentioned in the last video that I was not sure why people were considering Tanya to be suspicious like why they were kind of side in her a little bit but now I understand so Tanya has been making a really big effort to drive the narrative of what happened to Alexis she's been online like talking about stuff all the time like making different claims basically trying to drive the narrative that Tom is guilty now if I'm if it's my best friend I want justice to be served but I'm not going to try to drive the narrative one way or another because how salty I'm gonna look if I'm wrong so people are thinking that it's suspicious that she's kind of going above and beyond to make it look like Tom did it and kind of basically turned the spotlight away from herself. She's also been taking on a lot of interviews, kind of doing a lot of public stuff and people just, it's not sitting right with them. You know, they say like when people are guilty in a crime, they almost insert themselves in investigations. That's the vibe that people are getting from her. She also follows a suspicious Instagram account. I will put it right here. It's something about crime, something, I don't know, but it was on Reddit and people are like, why does she follow this Instagram page? And they screenshot it. People are really digging dirt, but I'm just the messenger. <laughs> now, last thing I wanted to touch on. There is an Alexis Sharkey subreddit. I, in recent years, have become a Reddit user. I always used to think people who use Reddit were weird, but I just never realized that there's a lot of gems on there. So I found the Alexis Sharkey subreddit and there's a lot of discussion about the possibility of her having overdosed. So like I said in my last video, when they discovered her body on the side of the road, she had absolutely no marks, no bruises, no nothing. There was no evidence of asphyxiation. There was no evidence of like blunt force trauma, nothing. It literally looked like she took her clothes off and went to sleep on the side of the road. So people are really kind of at the point where they're like, okay, an overdose is actually realistic, right? The autopsy was done an entire month ago. So the cause of death, if an obvious one, would have already been identified by now and released. So if it were something obvious where I have a bullet wound or I have obvious, like my esophagus is ruptured or something, like I was obviously choked, that would have been released by now. So people are speculating that since it's taking so long, they're waiting on a toxicology report, which most likely means they're looking for some substance in her blood. I don't know 100%. It could be that, or it also could just be that they're, they did the autopsy, but they also want the toxicology report before releasing anything. Or maybe they already released it to the family, but they're just not releasing it to the public. So there's a lot of speculation. I want to know what happened, though, and I want that toxicology report. I want to know what happened. But this does kind of play into the narrative that Tom said was which was that alexis left the house drunk hopped over the fence and got in a car that he was not familiar with people think that maybe she went off with her friends um she was texting someone named seb the night that she disappeared so people think maybe she got somewhere with friends maybe overdosed and then they didn't know what to do so they just left her there and that would explain why there was no visible signs of injury people have said that she did shrooms and that she dabbled in other drugs so it's not an idea that is unrealistic i just don't want to go on the radar and say like tom is guilty because if it comes back that he's not guilty i don't want to have been the person that you know drove this narrative that he was but things just don't seem to be adding up on tom's end tanya's acting real fishy and we don't have any toxicology or autopsy released yet so we are kind of in limbo here but I did want to bring the updates to you guys. As I get any more, I will be sure to give them to you. Now, 300 views isn't that much for a normal person. But for me, who is a tiny channel trying to grow, that's a lot of views. And people have commented on my Alexis Sharkey video, kind of like speculating what they think. Um, just giving me feedback in general and also asking for updates. People have messaged me asking for updates. So that is what I wanted to present to you today. 
If you have any feedback, if you have heard anything, please let me know down below. I would love to follow up if there's any other sources that you guys think maybe are good to follow up on. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.